This video will give a basic review of inheritance patterns. Some important terms you need to know are listed here. The first term, gene. A gene is a sequence of nucleotides found in DNA that code for a particular trait. I'm going to use pea plants as an example. There is a gene found in pea plants that codes for flower color. Now, there are some plants, pea plants, that have purple flowers. There are some pea plants that have white flowers. So obviously, there's a form of the gene that codes for purple flowers, and there's a form of the gene that codes for white flowers. These alternate forms of the gene are called alleles. By convention, uh, in pea plants, the allele that codes for purple flowers is represented by the big P, and the allele that codes for white flowers is represented by a little p. Big P is considered the dominant allele because, as you'll see, only one copy of it is needed for the plant to express the purple phenotype. Little P is considered the recessive allele because two copies of that allele are needed for the pea plant to produce white flowers. There are a few other terms you need to know as well. Phenotype, genotype, homozygous, dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Let's talk about each one of these. Phenotype is the physical representation of the trait. So in pea plants, there are purple flowers and there are white flowers. That's the phenotype. It's what you can see. Coding for that phenotype is the genotype. So in the pea plant example, there are three genotypes. There's big P, big P, which is homozygous, dominant. So homozygous meaning that you have two copies of the same allele, and it's called dominant because you have two copies of the dominant allele. Big P, little p is heterozygous. That's because you have two different alleles there. Note that both big P, big P genotypes and big P, little p genotypes, you produce purple flowers. The pea plant produces purple flowers. So different genotypes give rise to the same phenotype. Little p, little p now is homozygous recessive. Again, it's homozygous beca because you have two copies of the same allele, and it's recessive because the alleles are recessive. If you'll note, the heterozygous individuals are purple. They produce that purple phenotype flower. The big P is completely masking the presence of the little p. The little p is still there, you just can't really see it in the phenotype of heterozygous individuals in this pea plant example. This type of inheritance pattern in pea plants is called Mendelian inheritance. You just have one gene at one locus on a chromosome determining the trait. And there are just two alleles for that particular gene. You have one allele that is dominant and the other that is recessive. Um, this inheritance pattern is also called complete dominance because that dominant allele um, hides that recessive allele in the heterozygous individuals. Here's a figure here that will help you practice um, understanding complete dominance. Here we have uh, two chromosomes. Um, they're a homologous pair. One, of course, is from the male parent. The other is from the female parent. The male parent has um, an allele, has given this individual an allele for purple flowers, while the female parent has given this individual an allele for white flowers. So what is this plant's genotype. Take a moment and think about that. This individual has the big P, little p genotype. Big P because it has the allele for purple, po purple flowers, and little p because it has the allele for white flowers. What will be the phenotype of this individual? Purple, right? This individual is heterozygous and will produce purple flowers because the big P completely dominates, dominates the little p allele. So we've worked through complete dominance of one allele. We're now going to talk about more complex 
inheritance patterns. The first one I'm going to talk about is incomplete dominance. And what I want you to notice as we're talking about incomplete dominance is the heterozygous phenotype. I want you to note that it's intermediate between the two homozygous phenotypes. And the example that is always used when um, learning about incomplete dominance is using snapdragons. Snapdragons are a type of plant that can produce three different types of flowers. It can produce red flowers, white flowers, or pink flowers. Plants that produce red flowers are homozygous for the big R allele. So you can see red flowers are big R, big R. White flowers are also homozygous. They are big W, big W. If you cross red, red producing snapdragons with white flower producing snapdragons, meaning that if you exchange gametes between these two different plants, you will find that all of their offspring are pink. All of their offspring are heterozygous. Note that the offspring are pink. They are not red and they are not white. The heterozygous individuals have an entirely different phenotype that's intermediate between red and white. That pink heterozygous phenotype tells us that this is incomplete dominance. That big R allele does not completely dominate the white allele. The heterozyga, uh, heterozygous individuals have an intermediate phenotype. The next complex inheritance pattern I want to discuss is co-dominance. Again, you need to look at the heterozygous individuals to determine that the inheritance pattern you're observing is co-dominance. Co -dominant. uh, in heterozygous individuals, both phenotypes are expressed. Let's take a look at an example of that. We're also, the example that we're about to look at is also a good example of multiple alleles. And it involves the ABO blood group in humans. There are three different alleles that determine blood type in humans. The big A allele, the big B allele, and then the I allele. So there are three alleles that determine blood type. So that's why this is called multiple alleles. We have more than two alleles. Each of these alleles codes for something on the surface of our red blood cells. Uh, a allele and B allele, they code for carbohydrates on the surface of the red blood cells. They code for different carbohydrates, though. The I allele does not code for a carbohydrate on the surface of the red blood cell. These three different alleles can be found in different combinations. Six genotypes, in fact, can be produced from these three alleles. Um, big A, big A genotype produces uh, red blood cells that have that one carbohydrate uh, found on the surface of those red blood cells, and it gives rise to the phenotype of type A blood. Notice that big A uh, I also produces this phenotype because the I is recessive to A, to the A allele. Uh, an individual who has the genotype big B, big B, or big B, little i, uh, produces red blood cells with one type of carbohydrate on the surface of their red blood cells, and they have the phenotype of type B blood. The next genotype big A, big B, is where we see this co-dominance. Individuals that have this genotype produce red blood cells with both the A carbohydrate and the B carbohydrate on the surface of the red blood cells. And so their phenotype is type AB blood. The final genotype is little i, little i. Individuals who have that genotype do not produce these uh, carbohydrates on the surface of their red blood cells, and their type of blood is type O. So you have these six different genotypes, and you can see that co-dominance in the A, B, 
genotype because both carbohydrates are found on the surface of the red blood cells. So we've worked through complete dominance, incomplete dominance, codominance, and multiple alleles. We're now going to talk about pleiotropy. Pleiotropy involves just one gene, like these others have involved, but now we're looking at one gene that is having multiple phenotypic effects. And a good example of this is sickle cell disease. There's one gene that codes for the beta subunit of the hemoglobin protein. And if there is a mutation in that gene, sickle-shaped red blood cells are produced. Because the red blood cells have this sickled shape, there are a variety of symptoms associated with this. Chronic pain, gallstones, difficulty breathing. So individuals who have sickle cell disease have this one mutated gene. And as a result of this one mutated gene, they have a variety of phenotypic effects a variety of symptoms. And this is a good example of pleiotropy. Up to this point, we have talked about complex inheritance patterns involving just one gene. Of course, there are inheritance patterns that involve two or more genes. The first one that I want to talk about is epistasis. Epistasis is due to the expression of one gene being controlled by another gene. A good example of this uh, inheritance pattern occurs in Labradors. Let's take a look at that. There are two genes that are involved in the production of coat color in Labradors. The three phenotypes are black labs, chocolate labs, and yellow labs, and two genes are involved in determining those phenotypes. The first gene controls whether or not pigment production occurs, and the alternate forms of that gene are big E or little e. If just one E allele is present, then the production of pigment is turned on. If the animal has little e, little e, that's their genotype, then pigment production is not turned on. So if there is one copy of the big E allele, then gene 2 is activated and pigments are produced. Um, and there are two alternate forms at this gene for this gene as well, big B or little b. If just one big B allele is present, this results in the black coat phenotype in the lab. So a lot of dark pigment is being produced when just one B allele is present. So let's run through the different genotypes and phenotypes here, the different combinations. Um, for a black lab, again, you need just one copy of that big B allele. But keep in mind, there also has to be one copy of that big E allele, so the production of pigment even occurs. For a chocolate lab, if you look next, you'll see it's little b, little b. Um, however, note also here that that big E allele must be present for any pigment to be produced. And finally, in the yellow lab, the yellow lab has little e, little e genotype. Um, the the um, production of pigments is not occurring here, so the dog is yellow. It does not matter whether the dog is big B, big B, or big B, little B, or little B, little B, that, that gene isn't even being turned on. So um, gene 1 is controlling the expression of gene 2, and this is an excellent example of epistasis. So we've talked about epistasis. Another complex inheritance pattern involving two or more genes is polygenic inheritance. In polygenic inheritance, we look at a single phenotypic character, like skin color, and we know that it is affected by two or more genes. So two or more genes determine 
a single phenotypic character. Um, again, skin color is an excellent example of this because um, there are multiple genes that control skin color. Um, and the example here on the right, under polygenic inheritance, you can see that there are a range of skin colors ranging from light to dark. And that is because there are multiple genes controlling the expression of skin color. And you can see that here as well. In humans, there is a continuum from very light to very dark skin color and everything in between. There are multiple genes on different chromosomes determining what our skin color is. And this type of inheritance pattern um, is, is very common where there are multiple genes that determine um, the, the phenotype of the organism. Another complex inheritance pattern occurs when genes are linked, meaning that they're found on the same chromosome. They do not follow Mendel's law of inheritance. They do not move independently into gametes. Instead, they move together because they're linked. They're found on the same chromosome. A good example of that in humans is eye color and hair color. The genes that code for eye color and hair color are found on chromosome 15. And they're actually pretty close to each other on chromosome 15. Because they are close together, they move together into gametes. Um, and so uh, the allele that codes for blue eyes is often linked to the allele that codes for blonde hair. And you will see then that individuals often have a combination of these features. You find blue-eyed, blonde-haired people because those two genes are close to each other on chromosome 15 and are being inherited together. Another complex inheritance pattern occurs when the phenotype, like blood pressure, is determined by the interaction between both the environment and an underlying gene. Uh, so blood pressure, it is a complex phenotype. It is determined by multiple genes, and also it is determined by environmental factors like how much exercise is the person getting, and what is their weight, and what is their diet like. So that environmental, um, circ those environmental circumstances, along with the underlying genetic information, together they determine the phenotype of the blood pressure. Does the person, person have normal blood pressure? Do they have high blood pressure? Do they have low blood pressure? That phenotype is a result of the interactions between the environment and the person's underlying genetic information. The final type of complex inheritance pattern I want to discuss is sex-linked genes. A gene that is sex-linked is found on the X chromosome. Because it is found on the X chromosome, its expression in the phenotype varies depending on whether we have a female or a male. So let's look at an example. Here we have a female who has the big B allele and the little b allele. This is a gene on the X chromosome that determines whether or not the individual is normal or is colorblind. The female in this example has big B, little b. So she has a copy of the normal allele and she also has a copy of the mutated allele. If you look at the male here, he also has one copy of the mutated allele. Now, I'll tell you that colorblindness is a recessive condition. You need at least one copy if you're a male to have this condition. And if you're a female, well, you need two copies. You would need two copies of the recessive allele to be colorblind if you're a female. This female, though, is heterozygous, so she is not colorblind. The male, though, is because he has one copy of the recessive allele. 
The inheritance pattern then for sex-linked genes can often be identified because males are more likely to have the condition than females.